our question is about uh, reductionism and if uh, we as a system thinkers can be uh, or should be anti-reductionist or if there is also a middle way uh, between uh, uh, let's say pure reductionism and uh, pure anti-reductionism that, that, that is my my reasoning sharing with you. Uh, so just to uh, recollect, I mean, the main points, uh, recapitulate the main points of what, what reduction in, uh, argues. Uh, the idea is that there is a micro macro continuity across uh, levels uh, of aggregation, I mean, layers, so systems, meta systems, meta meta, etc. Uh, and the idea is that it's possible to do a reverse engineering from a higher to a lower level. So to reduce the properties uh, and the behavior of the whole to those of its parts, that is uh, of a system into its subsystems. By the way, even in our uh, club, I, I have heard uh, many times um, some of us saying that, uh, uh, I mean, implicitly, uh, though we probably would declare all non-reductionists, but then it was uh, very often the idea that uh, uh, were possible to go from the system to, or, or let's see, infer the, the system behavior from the, the behavior of its subsystems. So, uh, I mean, very often we are, are uh, kept into the, what is our, our, let's say, ideal view and then what, what we really do in our uh, scientific practice. So it's um, not, so, uh, not so taken from granted that we, we are really consequent in, in what we do respect to what we think in terms of, in, in pure theoretical terms. So um, the second point of reduction is that the, the, the sending from the first and previous one is that there is, there must be no emergent properties or something which is irreducible uh, from, uh, uh, from the subsystems, from the, from the elements, from the parts to the whole. Uh, what is only allowed to be is that, there, of course, there can be problems of measurement, which are uh, usually taken as solvable through approximations. So, the idea is that uh, it's possible to approximate uh, solutions, approximate the values of the parameters. So uh, basically uh, the idea is that everything can be approximate, I mean, effectively approximate. There's approximation that, that, that doesn't really uh, compromise uh, the outcome. Mm -hmm. Something which is, uh, uh, let's say manageable which is without, within a range of variation that is acceptable and does not compromise the, the sense of the operation. Um, and consequently, uh, should be possible to build my profound general theories that is moving vertically bottom up by increasing the level uh, of aggregation. And also another point which is not uh, so, um, mentioned often or me so uh, so clear is that the other implication that's possible to make also extensions uh, horizontally let's say so by enriching mm. the scope of application of a given theory uh, by adding some more aspect uh, some uh, new variable or by increasing maybe the scale of, of the variables uh, which is another important aspect. Uh, actually, it is one of the things that I have experienced very clearly in uh, working with agent-based uh, models. That is, uh, what holds, uh, uh, for instance, I made uh, a model of uh, um, interfirm networks, let's say industrial class. And uh, what, would, uh, what was happening uh, at the scale uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, dozens of uh, agents 
were not uh, uh, confirmed at the scale of hundreds agents and even different at the scale of thousands of agents. So things change, not only with, by uh, adding uh, new variables, but also by increasing the scale. I mean, all these, it is uh, uh, assumed that not happening by a pure reductionist perspective. So we can see this in this picture. It is, let's suppose we have uh, uh, basic, I mean, elementary phenomena with their own theories. Uh, so level one, let's call it uh, level one theories. And then uh, these phenomena can be, um, can work together, can interact together and create a new phenomena, the phenomenon E and F, let's call them level two theories. And then uh, in turn, these uh, uh, creating a general theory. So the, the idea of reduction is, is that uh, there is it's, uh, always possible to make a vertical extension and uh, uh, it's po always possible to give bottom up and top down. As you, as you can see, we have uh, arcs, uh, bi-directed arcs. So it is possible to uh, infer uh, from uh, a general theory, uh, theories of phenomena at the lower level and even lower level. So this is what is uh, called in, uh, in um, recent uh, works uh, in uh, biology, for instance. Is called precisely reverse engineering. Uh, I mean, it, it's interesting because I, <laughs> I, I imagine this, this definition by myself uh, preparing this uh, speech a few weeks ago. Then I found that actually in, in the biological literature on modularity, uh, it is explicitly uh, called uh, this mechanism the idea of reverse engineering. So it is. Uh, uh, going from the higher to the lower level and imagine what, or what, what were the generating uh, facts, generating phenomena producing the higher level phenomena. Lucio, and, Lucio, can you please speak better in the microphone? Yeah, what, what, what's... Uh, okay. 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 Better? okay. Um, and then we have also the horizontal uh, direction. That is uh, uh, what I said before, that is possibility to uh, extend a, phenomena, a phenomenon by adding a new variable. Uh, so let's suppose that we created a, a, a model or we are studying a phenomenon with uh, a certain number of, of, of variables, then we could add a new one and we shouldn't expect that something uh, completely new uh, should happen. That is, it's possible to add, it's possible to integrate, to extend, not only vertically, but also horizontally. So now, uh, uh, <laughs> we know very well, you know better than me, probably that uh, uh, with the, the systems, thinking. Uh, I mean, uh, this idea was questioned and, and it was questioned by the simple fact and the simple definition that uh, uh, the whole or the system is uh, something different than, than its parts. And later on, even more that there, there are uh, emergent properties, which is actually something a bit different than just saying that the, the, the system is not the sum of its parts. Um, and so jumps on the, the, the figure of, uh, of uh, Herbert Simon, because uh, I mean, uh, of course he was a great scientist with, but we, in, in a, playing a, a strange role, uh, or at least, uh, let's say, I wouldn't say uh, ambiguous, but I would say multifaceted truth, because Simon uh, 
the self-declared to be a, a, a system thinker, uh, but at the same time, uh, he was rather skeptical uh, concerning the implications of, of system theory. And actually, what he did uh, with uh, uh, these papers, I mean, three very important papers uh, in, in 52, 53, and uh, 61, and then with the famous The Architecture of Complexity in 62, with the idea of uh, near decomposability, it was just taking the, uh, the, the role to uh, neutralize uh, the anti-reductionism of system thinking. So playing, let's say, in the, in the opposite direction. And uh, so that's why his, his work is particularly important. Um, what, what, what he argued, he argued that at least some types of hierarchical systems uh, which he defined as multi-layer nested systems, like, like the previous picture that I showed, um, can be su successfully treated as nearly decomposable. And this idea of near decomposability uh, took later the, uh, the, the label of modularity and the debate on, modula on modularity and uh, near decomposability was then called uh, years later, many years later, as the modularity principle. Uh, then in, the, in the, that paper, he argues that uh, complex systems are uh, hierarchical systems, and uh, hierarchical systems are near decomposable systems. So this is, was actually reading carefully the paper it was a sort also of a tautology. It was a circular reasoning because he was defined hierarchical systems as uh, decomposable or near decomposable and near decomposable systems as hierarchical systems. So actually in, in that paper, which is a great paper actually, but uh, there is some, some kind of circularity in the reasoning. Uh, the point is that if Simon uh, were true, then uh, anti-reductionism would have no rationale because it, it would mean that it's possible to, to do exactly <coughs> the, the reverse engineering. And it's also notice, noticeable that not coincidentally, economic theory uh, adopted his arguments and uh, use those arguments to consolidate its tradition of uh, uh, anti-reductionism. I mean, uh, economic theory, um, at least in, in its mainstream of uh, general economic equilibrium is totally anti-reductionist. There is no, um, sorry, totally reductionist. Uh, and, and here I made the mistake sorry, in the slide, it's, uh, it's reductionist uh, <laughs> view. Sorry, this is, uh, <laughs> sorry, this was just a mistake. Um, so it's, uh, uh, I mean, the, the view of, of Herbert Simon was fundamental in uh, just in uh, bringing forth this uh, reductionist uh, um, tradition of economic theory. And by the way, even in the, um, let's say, uh, minority um, research uh, streams, uh, like uh, evolutionary economics, which is uh, definitely a minority uh, part, it's not mainstream, but even evolutionary economics uh, is basically adopting the idea of near decomposability. Uh, so very quick, it's demonstration of the composability was based on uh, uh, expressing a system as a system of equations and uh, demonstrating that it's possible to identify and group variables into subsystems. 
then takes such subsystems of equations as a single variable and so rebuild the whole system as a set of equations relating the subsystems. And then this way would be possible to calculate the contribution of each subsystem and within each subsystem, the contribution of each variable. And he demonstrates also that this procedure uh, of uh, the composition uh, is possible to, it holds also for nonlinear uh, equations. Uh, so it's clear that these subsystems of equations correspond to the in what later uh, he called the intermediate stable structures uh, in, in the biological uh, evolution is uh, of uh, composability. And maybe you remember the, the famous parable of the two watchmakers, Hora and Tempus, who one was Hora uh, was building just these intermediate structures uh, in building the whole uh, the whole watch, while Tempus was working at once with all components building the building the watch, and uh, Hora was efficient uh, just because uh, any interruption or any uh, mistake, any failure, uh, was uh, affecting only the intermediate uh, uh, structures and not the whole work. So or I had not to restart again to build uh, uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, watch. So this was the, the, the idea on demonstrating the, the advantage and the evolutionary advantage to uh, create uh, uh, intermediate structures. Then he argued uh, that of course in social systems and also in some other uh, physical systems, uh, the, the partitioning, uh, I mean, the decomposition uh, is not uh, so straight and is not, let's say, pure. Uh, it, it is not possible to uh, precisely, perfectly separate uh, the the, sub, the variables into subsystems, uh, but he said, okay, we, uh, we can just use the approximation and so make the boundaries uh, uh, or in grouping the variables uh, between uh, the groups of variables uh, more or less uh, uh, sensitive, more or less uh, sophisticated uh, and so that will be just the different ways to decompose the system. I mean, at the fine grain or, or, to, or uh, uh, larger, larger grain. Uh, by the way, this is something that uh, sounds pretty similar uh, to what is, done, what is done in uh, network analysis with the algorithms of community detection or block modeling, uh, because the idea is just looking at the strength of, uh, of uh, links uh, and the number of links, so density and strength, and according to these parameters, uh, grouping the nodes into communities. I mean, more or less is the, is the, same, uh, is the same logic. Now, what are the views of this? Uh, demonstration, um, Simon's demonstration. Uh, first, first is that uh, decomposition does not work well. The nonlinear equations are over the recursive form. Your microphone, Lucia. Does it not work? Yeah. No, no, it's slowly fade away. So you just uh, need to adjust okay. it a little bit. Now, it, does it work now? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, one point is about non-linearity. That is uh, um, not by chance, not, I mean, uh, Simon speaks of stable intermediate forms and 
in its demonstration does not use uh, uh, recursivity, does not use, uh, uh, it, I mean, it, its system and it's in its demo mathematical demonstration, there are no recursive functions and no function, no linear functions of order major than two. I mean, as differential equations. So basically, uh, he ran the, the, the demonstration using, let's say, a manageable and uh, non-real complex uh, examples uh, of, of equations and of functions. Um, the second point is that the composition presumes that the real system can be always expressed as systems of equations, but we know that this is not true. For instance, in uh, computational science, uh, we know that uh, when there is uh, recursivity, uh, plus even, even more if there is also a synchronicity in the interactions or uh, uh, contradictory behaviors, uh, it is impossible not only to find analytical solutions, so to treat it like, like to treat the, the, the problem as, as, a, as a system of equation, but it's also even sometimes impossible to express the phenomenon the, the, in terms of systems of equations. And um, beside, besides chaos and catastrophes, Recursive interactions, as we, as we know, uh, can generate uh, uh, even new emergent uh, phenomena or new emergent properties. So this makes uh, uh, impossible the decomposition. That the, these are all the flaws that are in uh, in his demonstration, uh, and so. Because uh, this type of aspects, that is uh, recursive um, interactions, uh, asynchronicity, uh, and, and all the rest that I said, are uh, characterizing usually uh, complex systems, and in particular social systems. So it seems that decomposition or near decomposition actually does not apply to these types of systems. So it seems that his uh, demonstration, I mean, Simon's demonstration does not work actually for these cases. So uh, the idea is where do we place? Uh, uh, where should the true system thinker side? Uh, we had to be anti-reductionist uh, because a complex system is to be supposed to be non-decomposable, as, as I just said. Uh, but it would mean also, uh, I mean, a, a, a major sacrifice, I mean, implication in this, that is, uh, that become uh, impossible to build general theory, I mean, micro-funded general theory. So the idea is that, okay, if, if we break this relationship, if we break the possibility of, of uh, reverse engineering, then uh, we can build general theories. I mean, you can build theories uh, about general phenomena. I mean, about, uh, uh, for instance, large systems, but we cannot make a micro foundation of this theory. So we, cannot uh, uh, go in a, in, a, in a sort of theoretical continuity from the micro level to the macro level. Um, every time that a complex phenomenon is explained by a theory, uh, a system thinker must be at least dubious that that theory could still work, even if a single variable is added or if the scale is substantially modified, which was the horizontal axis in, in, uh, in the previous uh, picture. And there is also an, another implication for approximation. So approxi approximations work if uh, there is, uh, let's say, a mild non-linearity and not strong linearity in terms of uh, recursivity, uh, emergent properties uh, and, and etc. 
think there are chaos. So my final remarks and the question for the discussion is uh, uh, near decomposability, which gave rise, uh, rise then to the debate on modularity principle, uh, could become a further case of theoretical import from biology. And actually, uh, in economics, uh, I mean, in evolutionary economics, at least, uh, where this debate is, is still going on with uh, a lot of, uh, of uh, effort or contributions, uh, what is actually uh, the case is about, uh, um, I mean, imitating or take importing uh, methods and concepts from uh, biology. So once more, let's say, and in particular, uh, the focus is, is on the Kaufman's uh, uh, fitness landscape models, you not know, the FL models which is just based on, on, this, uh, on this idea. Uh, at least uh, it is useful for these uh, goals. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that Stuart Kaufman would, would agree with this type of views. Um, so the, the modularity principle in the evolutionary perspective, we would say probably we, we can agree that nature adopts uh, modularity logic. That is the uh, uh, creating a stable intermediate uh, structures. Um, so- Can you please pick up the microphone again? Yeah, there must be some uh, uh, failure in this uh, microphone. Um, okay, so th this seems pretty, uh, clear and, and shareable, uh, but what is uh, not implied is that it's possible to make the reverse engineering. So from the uh, higher levels to the uh, originating uh, the lower levels. I mean, uh, reductionism also in natural science is compromised if there are these problems. Um, and even more, if we would like to apply the same logic to social systems, uh, because, okay, so uh, <coughs> we could apply, we could uh, employ the logic of modularity in building, uh, for instance, uh, technological uh, design or, uh, uh, in build, or in managing organizations but uh, we know that anyway, these, uh, these uh, mm, st structures, these intermediate structures and these modules will produce unintended consequences. So again, the point is, okay, uh, we could imit we humans could imitate nature in modularizing our uh, uh, social designs, but uh, would it imply that uh, we could do the reverse engineering? I mean, being reductionist uh, in, uh, from the consequences of this design to the design itself. This is uh, something that is totally not for granted. It's probably impossible. Uh, now the point is that we, if we if we answer no to this possibility, uh, we then are condemned to a straight theoretical fragmentation, which is not also so so nice for uh, for scientists. So we uh, are condemned to to make theories only for specific speci each each specific phenomenon has his its own theory, but you cannot uh, go from one to the other at the same level of aggregation, at the same layer, and even, even neither, uh, even less from a level to another level, I mean, at least uh, in, in a top-down direction. So 
uh, this is a big sacrifice, actually, and it's difficult to accept it. By the way, uh, this perspective, this epistemological perspective, has been taken by analytical sociology, and it, it is one of the main uh, uh, aspects uh, which is criticized by uh, its opponents. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, integrate, uh, you cannot uh, uh, build uh, general theories. Um, alternatively, and this is, uh, I really, I'm really curious to, to, to know your, your, um, your view, your ideas. Uh, would it be possible to imagine a modularity science? I mean, it, it can find a sort of modularity laws, uh, which could be uh, common to different fields, to different topics. And somehow, maybe cybernetics could be a good candidate in understanding how uh, modularity can be can follow the same the same laws in different fields. I mean, if, if this were true, this could be a, a form of weak reductionism. So, coming <laughs> and this is the last slide. Uh, coming back to the previous picture. Uh, in this case, we wouldn't have uh, uh, arrows, I mean, uh, uh, bold arrows by direction. This is our question marks. If it's possible to uh, go bottom up or especially top down from these uh, lay in these layers, and uh, uh, what could be done when and if could be uh, integrate vertically or horizontally a given a given theory. So okay, that's uh, that's it. Do we have uh, quick questions? Uh, one quick question: Is it possible in your weak reductionism to have a scaling? of importance. There are lethal variables that will kill my system. I can slough off my skin in the shower. That doesn't kill the system. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it, can we get a weak reductionism that looks at lethal variables, which are important for the continued functioning and reproduction of that system, sustainability, and things that are, in a sense, not as important, though maybe supportive. Uh, good point. Um, I don't know. That's my answer. But what I what I believe that this could be the position of Simon, for instance, of Herbert Simon. Uh, as far as I know, uh, his um, his works. So he would uh, would agree with this idea. Let's say, okay, being reductionist, let's say, for some uh, kind of variables, which uh, that we could, could consider fundamental variables, huh? uh, the, defining the the, the 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 phenomenon in in question, and being non-reductionist. Uh, uh, as concerning, let's say, um, ancillary uh, variables and ancillary <laughs> aspects. Uh, I, I, I imagine, I, I, I guess that this could be uh, exactly the position of, of Simon, we, who actually was uh, in a, in a, I, I, I define it as, uh, let's say, ambivalent, not ambiguous, but uh, multifaceted position respect to reductionism. He was calling himself a uh, reductionist, but at the same time, system thinker. Uh, and just uh, he, later on, he self-defined again himself as, uh, uh, he said, the uh, pragmatic reductionist. That is, uh, uh, in, I mean, uh, framed in terms, in, in terms of pragmatism. So does it work or doesn't it work? Thank Go you. ahead, please. Okay. And then Jamie. 
Uh, my question follows up on the previous question, and and Lucio already knows my commentary a bit, because I'm I'm very very close to Simon. I, I read everything from from Simon. Uh, the interesting thing is that if you use a measurement instrument, all these questions can be nuanced. For example, uh, if you use uh, Shannon's theory, you can ask yourself whether there's in between group variants, uh, in addition to grouping variables. And so you can then say, you don't have to take all these philosophical positions or as that it is possible to build a general theory off and then something comes. So I'm inclined to go back and to say, uh, we share, I think, the idea that the methods have to be developed, but I never see you developing methods. I never see you doing the measurement. Jenny. Uh, um... I have read somewhere uh, this of the, the different types of reductionism uh, that, that are uh, or that always show up in the conversation. And I, and I don't remember the four, but, but, uh, but there is one that I noticed uh, I didn't see. So one is reductionism in terms of what is the stuff of the world. So whether it's everything that is said in particle physics and that, that is the foundation or whether actually maybe it is um, electricity, the study of electricity that needs to be used as a foundation as opposed to particle physics. So, so what is the bottom stuff? But then there is the second one. Um, so I'm not sure whether you, uh, I think you were talking in that first level uh, of reduction or non-reductionism. I think that is called uh, non-reductive materialism or something like it. But, but the second one, and this is that I wanted to ask a question about, there's also a uh, language. And in your slide, I do not see you anywhere discuss the emergence of language. And that also applies to logic, by the way, just because logic is a language. So, so the role of the emergence of language, the role of the written language, the, this, how the written language came into existence, and, and to which extent are we talking about the reduction into uh, a linguistic reduction? So that, that is a total different sort of reduction. And then there is the third one, I think that Lut was referring to this methodological reduction. It's like, what are the different methods to study something and, and who can claim uh, to have uh, access to the, su the superior method? And um, as an alternative, I, I'm just giving an answer immediately. I, I, I like to think of everything as a circle, a talking circle, like with every point being equally important. So I'm not looking at something like this is the foundation or this is where everything needs to end up, but more about um, the dynamics in, in a talking circle that everyone brings this perspective and that it's really, different ways of talking about the same reality but at different levels so that we have uh, let's say a thousand different ways of looking at the world that are all each in his own term are very legitimate and and that this question about reductionism non-reductionism and emergence it's really a question about whether someone is more important in this conversation than someone else or whether all of us bring something to the table and that we need to uh, take turns to listen to everyone occasionally. So in Herbert Simon, there's Laplacian and uh, Men uh, Mendel type of reductionism, genetic. Yeah. And so I think that the purpose of cybernetics is to kind of get away of, uh, uh, I, I would call it, I, I don't know how to call it imperial reductionism. Uh, That's not kind us. Of, yeah. Um, does that be, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, but imperial reduction for me is linguistic. And, and I think La, is Laplace also talking about the linguistic reduction? It's in a published when it's a typo Tesla. 
that's what Laplace answers to Napoleon. Yeah, I know. Him. But 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 there are um Lapaz was living 200 or I don't know how many yeah, about 200 years ago so the day or maybe a little less than that I don't remember exactly which year he said that but, but at that the time point is that, that he reduced it would be possible to reduce everything yeah, yeah. but we're not I'm not I'm not concerned with Laplace today I'm concerned with like how in this community among ourselves as cyberneticians, what are all the different views in reductionism among us today in 2021? Lucia, you have some response? Yeah. Yes, I, I have some comment. I mean, uh, 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 very, very short. Uh, it's about language. I, I agree that it's, uh, it's an important point. Uh, and uh, it, that it can contribute to create, uh, uh, to hinder the possibility or prevent the possibility of reductionism. Uh, by the way, this is what, uh, what in the philosophical approach to reductionism, uh, what happened actually, uh, just very much based on, on the role of language in science and in explanations. But in the specific case, uh, Simon was totally, as far as I know, non concerned about the role of language, there because the only language and knowledge for this type of things uh, was uh, believed to be mathematics. So, um, EG, universal EG. language. Is Sorry? The EG, that's a student of Simon, did the yes, piece yes, with Simon. That's about words and language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, but even the uh, the successive um, debate on modularity uh, and even contemporary is definitely uh, ignoring uh, language at all. I mean, there is no any reference to the the role of language. I'm I I do not agree with that. I was just reporting that this is yeah. what what uh, what's happening, and. Uh, uh, methodological uh, reductionism. So I, I do not, actually I'm referring to ontological reductionism because metho methodological reductionism doesn't make sense at least for me. I mean, you, you can use the same method at different levels. So that doesn't make uh, very much sense in my, in my view. Uh, conversely, for, uh, because I, I didn't uh, I didn't give specific ex examples and it could take too long, but just short. Uh, I mean, actually, let's suppose uh, we were uh, talking uh, between economies. So, and we are looking for a theory of industry behavior. So, behavior at the level uh, industry means uh, uh, many companies into the same. Uh, uh, sector into the same uh, uh, type of, produ of of product. So then, uh, microfunded means that we go from the individual's behavior to the company's behavior, and from those behaviors to the behavior of the in at the industry level. So uh, the reverse engineering would be that we could uh, make a micro foundation giving back from the higher level, that is the industry level, to the company level, and from the company level to the individual level. I mean, and that's something that is, uh, how to say, very much, uh, very much appreciated and uh, sometimes taken as a, a requirement of, of a good theory. And if we, but this presumes actually uh, actually, reductionism. Jason, can I make a can I make a quick comment? Yes, please, quick. <laughs> okay, a quick one Wait. for Lucia, because Lucia and I have been having uh, conversations outside this meeting in a in a similar direction. Um, there is an interesting point made by the object orientated ontologists, who believes that everything is just an object, and they uh, at one stage deny the presence of emergence in physical objects. They say there is no evidence of any of, of any property that emerges that is not inherent 
in the original physical beings of the physical manifestation of those objects. Now, I, for me, that's an interesting point because if you accept that as true or likely, then um, it, uh, for them, the only thing that emerges, the only question of emergence is one of appearance or aesthetics. Um, but that then makes the point for cybernetics because cybernetics was really devised to cope with complex systems where you get emergence of information you get. So, so um, I like Lucio's talk. It, was, uh, it made the point of why you need systems thinking to systems thinking is the only system that can do way of thinking about complex systems that gets any handle on it but um the question of emergence that is worrying lucio so much lucio much is there it is it is very evident and and in my work i have found it to be very evident you cannot see down through emergence easily except by taking lerman's concept of uh, re-entry and taking that back with you down. Um, and the only way I found of managing it is the VSM, where you can have your individual layer, your higher layer, and your industry layer above that. And each one has an emergent property, and they're controlled and managed by norms of behavior. And this is where Lucha and I differ. There's no formulas that do it. It is human behavior that comes in to manage it ultimately, because that is what is emerging out of those um, systems. But what if they don't have their own behavior? Why, why not ask that as an empirical question? So um, we have evidence that groups can behave, an individual can behave differently in a group from social identity theory. Sure. So you can be one thing in your work where you may be an individual, you may be another identity in your family mm -hmm. where you take on a father's role. You, so you do, an uh, individual will behave differently in different situations. And so you'll behave differently when you're in a group. And yes. groups may behave differently too. No, so there's Luke, no way of going back through that equation. Yeah, and there is also the psychoanalytical literature that that has very uh, fine-grained studies on how people behave strangely differently in groups, but it's still acknowledged as the individual interacting with his environment that he may treat as objects. Yeah. At some point, uh, maybe the emergence becomes condensed into new objects. Is that a possible? Well, just to... Yeah, and, and that's exactly what you find in social identity theory. Exactly. <laughs> Shall we listen to 